you want to call these. We have lots of names for our series. Um, we are filling up our YouTube channel with lots of great content for all of you. So please go visit the YouTube channel when you have a chance. Every Friday at 2, um, our colleague Shannon Jones does a really fun um, chat. So check her out. She's often um, kneading her bread dough while she's talking to everyone. And then next week on Thursday, we're going to be um, talking to Joshua Hebert about his exhibition, which is still up in the gallery right now and will be there when we reopen. Elise, hi, Elise. Um, <laughs> We are so honored to have Ibrahim Saeed with us today. Hi, Ibrahim. He Hi, is in yeah, North Carolina. Inviting me. So. Yay. Um, <laughs> Ibrahim was a guest artist in residence at the Clay Studio in 2017. Am I right about that? I, I think so. I, I mean, I don't really remember. I, I don't know. A few years ago. Um, and he's been a good friend ever since. He's come back to do some projects. And we're really excited that he is going to be one of the three lead artists on our Making Place Matter exhibition, which will be the first exhibition when we open our new building next year, um, generously funded by the Pew Center for Arts and Heritage. Um, Ibrahim is Egyptian. He now lives in um, the US and North Carolina. He's um, the product of many generations of potters in um, Fustat. In, in, it's part of Cairo, or it's its own separate city, Ibrahim. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you now part of Cairo, but Fustat in 641, I think, to 800, it was like the capital of Egypt. Um, so we're excited um, very much that Ibrahim's work really combines a lot of different concepts and I, um, I was writing some ideas to him and one of the things that occurs to me often is that his work really is about the connections between two ideas. So the traditional in Egypt as well as modern creativity um, and artistry is one of those connections that you'll see as we talk, um, as well as the, the concept of joining beauty with function, um, old techniques and new techniques, all these really great concepts that um, Ibrahim explores in his work. He's extremely highly skilled um, and he gets, he, um, well you are, he honors his father with the, um, giving him the, uh, the skills that his father had in that area. So he was, um, Ibrahim often talks about seeing his father and just thinking that he was the best potter in Fustat, right? Um, one of the best, so. One of the best. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we, um, from the age of six, he was spending a lot of time in his father's ceramic studio, learning, watching, playing, um, and what he realized later through playing with clay and experimenting with it, he really um, absorbed the concept of the clay and, and got to know the material from a young age. So we're going to talk a little bit about his biography in the early years and then once he kind of moved into the um, art world and came here to the U.S. But first, I would like um, Ibrahim to give us a tour of his studio where he's sitting, and also to introduce us to his wife, Mariam, who's also an artist. <laughs> As you know, guys, we are all at home now, so I share a studio with my wife, Mariam. She's a painter. And Hi. She, yeah. <laughs> you know, I built. And, and she's the one bringing me to the United States. So, I dragged yeah, him here. Yeah. yeah. So even if we plan to live in Egypt. But anyway. Okay. So, so yeah. and, and I'm, I'm a camera woman. So just it's my yeah, fault will, if it doesn't if, she, if it doesn't work. Oh, one more thing. She will help <laughs> me with my uh, with the camera, with the computer, and also she will help. She will help me with my English because my English is not good. But if yeah, so well we we think it's fine, but that's it's fine. Not. I know it's fine. 
Okay, so okay. you yeah, wanna, I'll know. follow you and you just give him a little tour of, of like, he actually has like three studios, but this is, this is our shared one in the house. Yeah. So would you, you go uh, over and show me, I'm gonna follow you. Yeah, so, yeah, I check out oh. my wheels. Okay, where's his wheel? Yeah. Right here. here. Uh, and then cardboard table, with cardboard table yeah. and those are my four tracks. Okay, some of my files spray into this ceramic now. I some of my you wanna work I'm doing right now? So we'll, yeah, let's show show some pieces you're working on. Oh wow. Yeah, that's one of my Can you guys see that? Pieces. Okay. Yeah. Just drying now. It's drying. And then there's it's drying. You guys can see that? See in there? Okay. Yeah. On the, the side. I'm working on so right now. Yeah, I cover my beads very well because it dries so fast. Yeah, and if you don't, if you if you don't um, hear him well or you don't understand something, just let me know. So that's one. Yeah, that's that's the piece I'm working on now. Right now, still not finished with it, and that will be part of it here and another two pieces there. So, as you see, I work on the wheel and I stuff pieces together to make my idea. Yeah. And we can we can come back to some I, of those. Right? I just want I just wanted to um, jump in for one second and say that everyone's muted. Um, if you have a question, you are welcome to put it in the chat. And if you want to have a uh, back and forth, we can unmute you, but it's uh, too much background noise with the other way. Right. Do you want to get a little closer, Mariam? Yeah. Here, wait, wait, Ibrahim. Okay. okay. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, right. So there's, um, like you can go down here and choose the show them the the base or how you yeah. <laughs> wait so i don't know if you guys can see the piece of string that he wrapped around the bottom so i was i was worried the piece open with the pressure of this piece in the top so i make straps here you know i don't know if you can see that really yeah we can see that's great to make the piece doesn't break yeah oh uh, just that little string will keep it stable is that yeah, I don't want to win because this. Uh, no, she just separate... saying like that's so small. Do you think that's strong enough? Yeah, I just <laughs> don't want to the, the pressure here makes the piece open down there. Got it. Yeah. 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 Like those, um, photos, like those photos I sent you, Jay Z. There's like all this rigging that he's doing while it's drying. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have to cover this piece before we go here. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna. Um, one of the questions that I'm gonna ask after you. Um, show us a little bit more is about these um, technical innovations that you have sort of figured out as you go along. You have, um, you know, talked a lot about your and, use of the wheel. And yeah, because yeah, you can see some. Yeah. How I I recycle my clay here. So we are at home. So any what we have to work with. I, 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 I learned this to keep every separate piece of clay, so. Yeah, he's a good just, recycler, so. Yeah. Okay, and. And you can choose him also. Well, I mean, no, I mean, like, okay, so we'll just like give you a, a, a view. So then the oh, studio. Oh, that's my section, guy. Oh yeah, that's his half, and then my half is the bigger half over there with my painting, <laughs> and then it goes over, and then storage, and then we're back over here, so. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share my screen with everyone so that they can see um, the video of your other studio space. Yeah. Hold on one second, yeah. and um, yeah. hopefully everyone can see that. We'll just play. yeah. Okay, we're gonna take you into Ibrahim's studio. Which is very nice now. I know I said that. <laughs> Actually, there's this motorcycle 
which is probably the most exciting thing he wanted to share. Anyway, you can see that it's it's a mess in here, so it's not worth us having him sit and talk, but I think you get to see some of these bigger pieces in context. And he's making some molds and a bunch of my old stuff and some little pieces of his sitting around and tools and other little knickknacks. Okay. And then back to our garden. And there's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think it's really just one of the benefits of this new technology that we're using is that we get a chance to see into people's homes and their personal spaces. And we really appreciate you sharing your personal studio. And um, I know you said you were worried it was a little messy, but I mean, that's part of the charm of all this. I think that we, we get to see... Um, all these different things that we don't usually get to see. And hopefully after this is all over, knock on wood, um, we'll be able to bring some of the, these um, technologies with us and, and keep using them. So um, I think that you were gonna show us the small finish piece that's behind you there on the table. Maybe um, hold it while you're sitting there and you can tell us about the different processes that you used when you were, um, making yeah. that yeah uh, i'm this piece you mean uh different processor of scale you know like how i techniques. techniques like how i make it yeah so it's it's two parts thrown on the wheel you know this part is separate this part is separate and then i hand painted them together but in my idea of my work i i i love Egyptian ships with fossils and even when I start to work in this idea of Jacques Filter and I start thinking how I bring the two ideas together, it was how to keep the outside line of the fossils and uh, to figure out somehow way to put them together, you know, looking for negative space. Um, uh, thinking about every separate thing in the piece to make, to create one whole idea with yeah. colors and with techniques. So the technique I, I, I built, I saw this piece alone, uh, this piece alone, and it really needs some, like, <clears throat> some uh, professional scale to make these pieces fit together, even when you put them together. And I, I put support, if you look here closely, you will find there is space between them. So when I make the piece, I put support under, which sometimes is very tricky because this slaps here to when you carve it, when you make hole on it, it could, uh, uh, the pressure of the piece in the top, it could make it break very easily because the piece when you make uh, holes, when you cut on it, it's, uh, it's weak, not, uh, more than if it's solid, you know? Yeah. So I try to put support as I can and to, uh, with the, some pieces, some pieces uh, like the piece you saw in the garage, the very big piece you saw in the garage, I put support under between, between them in, in, inside the piece to make it not flex, you know? Mm. So it's every time I have idea, I have to use different techniques to make the idea. So I put them together and I try to keep this very simple line with the hand up there. Like, uh, like really, like the shapes I love in the Egyptian story, you know? Yeah. But also one of the things is when I said about this idea how to put them together was part of me thinking how to put this car into a piece and feels like part of the piece you know pieces has have carbon on it okay. the two idea uh, not become together so that's one of my challenges in my work so 
Yeah, and I think that that echoes the idea that you're combining two ideas. Like you, here you're taking two forms and putting them together, but it's also two ideas. It's the inside of the jug filter yeah. and the external form that you love. And I, I guess we should just tell not everybody on the call will know what a jug filter is. Um, I have, do you want to talk about that? And I'll pull up um, the screen where I can show a picture. Yeah, I mean, I have some DCs here I can show. That's like really the original. They are very dusty. But anyway, that's exactly like, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you have a real one. That's better. But here's the um, images of the historic ones. And then. Um, you can see in these images the way that Ibrahim has um, used that idea of the punctured or the perforated circle um, and then um, altered them to make his own work. Yeah, that was very early. The first photo you saw in the table was like, that was how I started really. And I started to think about it, but as you, uh, as you know, so that's the idea. Here, I will show you this in the video because I made copy of, of them, like how I learned to make fossils too, like the same idea. I made copy and I made copy of fossil. Uh, what I like from Egyptian movement, I would go to draw them and make copy of them in my puzzle studio before even I start to make my own art. So, and that's give me so much skills and give me also, when I make this copy, I start to think how I use that and who, who used that before me and how they uh, 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 make art from it and what's the strongest on them and what's the weakest in this art and I, that's it. So when you're working with your thinking, you get the skills to make your object and also get so many idea behind it. So I made copy of them and you can see it has like, the only different really was this black frame because usually they are red clay like that with white slip inside. And I want to see how small this one is. This one in dimension is 10 centimeters, you know, and people would cut, that's what it is, the neck of the piece in the top here, and the bottom is the body. That's the, like a broken part of the piece. And you can't see really this carving if, if this piece is not broken. So only if you are drinking from it, you can see this beauty inside. Right, yeah, just so people know, these are jugs that have um, this, there would be a jug underneath and the neck at the top, and then you would use that to take water from the river and the filter keeps the um, debris and the leaves and things out of the water so that it can still be clean drinking water, just so everyone understands what that is. Yeah, and they made like, they made geometric, they made like animals, they made birdies, they made writing sometimes, houses sometimes, so yeah, all that's like, uh, uh, when I, I make these copies, which they were a lot, you know, I, 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 I thought about what I will do with that in my own art or what I find myself in, in this. In making the copies. Yeah, so you would be, you were learning about clay in your father's studio, you were experimenting and playing while you were watching him throw on the wheel and watching his skill, and then you would go to the museum and yeah. sit there and can you tell us, you know, how did it feel? Were you a kid by yourself? Like how old were you? You're in the museum and people are thinking like, what is I, I, I coming in here for? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't a kid by myself because my father was one of the most talented people in Egypt throwing in the world and the uh, art ceramic community in Egypt is different to more than here. So most of them doesn't throw in the way. So they would come to my father to make some shapes for them because he was very talented doing that. And these artists taught me a lot. Some of them helped me, some of them told to me go to the museum. Some of them 
take me like one of them dr gamal abud allah yarhamu he was one of the best artists in egypt and when he realized this artistic vision on me he took me with my hand to the museum for first time and i appreciate that you know people try to help as they can so that was very good so first time i went to the egyptian museum i lost because it's like very rich story and so much ceramic work and Egyptian museum you will never see any museum like that so they stuck every, all the stuff in the top of each other because it's a lot of collections they have and they doesn't have space, space to put them so you go for first time you like you your eyes you feel like you are lost because you can't really focus and see uh, every piece different but also one of, the, of it which makes me a little bit crazy you never see any information on the <laughs> ceramic pieces like just grob of pieces and writing like it's a period is what no any other information <laughs> historical about them, which makes me crazy and mostly in English. So <laughs> <laughs> if you don't speak English like me, <laughs> you don't understand anything. Even the shows in Egypt, when they show historical Egyptian in Egypt, mostly in English and which makes me crazy sometimes. Like, okay. So it's really <laughs> for the tourists, they're not they're not really doing yeah, it for them. Yeah. Well, so everybody out there, whoever wants to become, you know, a curator in Egypt, you have to go make better labels in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and that's a so, good um, way to transition, I think, to this idea that you, you had these. You, your father was a mentor. Then you had other mentors, and you, you um, started making your own work, and were so dedicated to having it show your own voice and then you had a chance to go outside of Egypt to to display and to exhibit your work and I think yeah. Belgium was the first place can you talk it, about that experience a little yeah it was it was craft show in Belgium it's called Expo it was 2002 and that's first time really I leave my home country Egypt to go uh, to western country and it's 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 the exil, you know, if you go in Egypt, in the, even in the shop to, to buy something, you find every battery is stuck with everything they have in the battery. When, when I went to Belgium, and that's really what changed my idea so much about my work and the simplicity of the line, which you go. Uh, when I went to Belgium, I go to the shop, I find one or two pieces in the battery. You know, even if there are a lot inside, but what they show is like one or two pieces of what they have inside. And that was like something strange for me because I never seen that before. But it was one of the most important things to change my thinking about my art you know so yeah like like you you go you go in egypt you know, for rent is a veteran you don't know what you want to buy for what you see you know <laughs> a lot of stuff you can't really pick what you want but in belgium it was very simple and very uh, the, the idea of simplicity you know that's in in western uh yeah that you would have if you had fewer objects that made them seem more valuable and you could look yeah. at them and you could see them really as opposed to like yeah, a jumble yeah yeah like in the egyptian museum <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like like not all the places like that but most like 70 percent of cairo is like that you know so like I am, I am not rich guy to go to very fancy place and to want to buy something from there, you know. So I go to whatever I have to go to, you know. So um, I think that we have some people who are interested to know a little bit more technically about um, the piercing. So I'm just sharing 
the screen so that there's a we have a few pictures, but then maybe um you can I don't know if you it's easy to show your tools there. Um but here's can yeah, I, I have my picture yeah. of um Ibrahim as he's carving this very, very large piece, which I imagine there's a lot of different technical aspects of just keeping the clay at the right um uh. you know hardness and keeping the thing from collapsing like you said and there's a couple of other and then once you get it finished the idea of trying to get yeah. it into the kiln you know, uh, can i i say comment in this piece which you call the magnolia this, this piece, is the one in the garage yeah this, this is the same one inside in the in the garage and this one when i make it first time and i put it together I, I get someone to help me to put Nikki. the two pieces yeah. together and then I went to clean my hand and I come back, I found in the floor collapsing down <laughs> after all this work. Uh. And I was like so mad of myself and that's because the, the pressure of the piece in the top, in the chest of the piece make it collapsing. And then I start to think how I make that happen. The, 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 the good thing about me, and um, I try to think about the way how to make my work. And I am very patient with that. Even if sometimes the piece broke and I said to myself, I will not make that again. I find myself <laughs> next the day going to the studio and try to make the same piece again and thinking about yeah, I have this problem this time, how I, I get this problem out. So to make this piece in big teller, I made a slender inside the piece to hold the chest of the piece, you know? So when I put the piece in the top, it doesn't collapse again. And it, it worked very well, uh, you know, with, with this piece. Yeah, just a uh, comment just to them. Well, that's good. That's, a, that's um, another one of my questions was just, um, I was reading your essay in the um, modern, the Journal of Modern Craft about the the idea that you have to keep making technical innovations in order to achieve these ideas that you have. So this is a great example of you have a very big idea, literally big, <laughs> and you have to figure out how to make it um, no, is that, is that... possible to to um to fire it. So that's one. So it's a cylinder that's made of clay. That's within you know that's. Yeah, yeah, I throw a slender inside, mm -hmm. exactly the same size of the top of the piece here, from the bottom to the top, and I, I, I throw it with the piece. When I throw the piece, after I finish throwing the shape I want, I throw the slender up, and I tighten it even with the bottom part here. So it's only one, one piece. It's like tube, it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like tube inside of ceramics to hold the okay. weight of the beast, yeah. Do you want to talk about the middle of the neck? And, and yeah, the middle of the, yeah. <laughs> I made video of that. So the first time I remember to make something very exciting and Mariam will get mad of me now. <laughs> so I I, bring, I made this piece at UNC Grand Sibiru, which I, uh, I taught, I teach. And I, I bring Mariam to make Feed you after the piece fire in the piece fire to break this ring. How I break it because I put this ring as support, and after first fire, I break it. So go back, go back one image. Go, yeah, go back one image. Okay. Yeah, this ring here. You see in the middle. In the middle section. That that um, uh, Nikki Blair, who's assisting Ibrahim, she's positioning the top piece right over a little ring. Do you see mm -hmm. that? Yeah. That ring is just to hold the piece in position till after the bisque after, fire. Yeah, after all, after I put my hands, which will hold the piece in after firing, you know. So I, I attach the top piece with the bottom piece with handies. You know. You can see it in the in the in the me in the finished photo. But anyway, that ring will support and I will break it after the bisque fire. He cracked okay. he's gonna he was planning on cracking that, it out with and a that's hammer. First time I do that <laughs> in my work. You that know terrifying. I bring Mariam to 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 make a video of 
me cracking. Because usually I see people cracking some pieces and they bought them as an installation. And I was like, I'm cracking this piece to show the beauty under this ring, you know? So can you, Marim, come and make video of it? And after I break and finish my piece and Marim looked at me and said, oops, oops. I didn't I record. forgot to press record. So <laughs> it was off. And I was like very mad of it. <laughs> 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 <So> <laughs> <laughs> but well, inside, like inside yeah, that inside ring, the ring is, there is carving. In like the there's top. on the top and the bottom, and like the, the jug filter carving. Yeah. Which so once it's together and it's installed, you never see. But you just you know it's there. No, you no you do see because he crocks out that little cylinder in the middle, and you can look through like a three inch little passage, and you can see the carving inside here. But you can't see it now because it's just holding the piece up. Um, oh. If you see on his website, if you look at the magnolia, if you look at it finished, you'll see what we're talking about. But this doesn't have the arms built on yet. So he needed to put them together before he could hand build the six arms that will eventually hold the top up on. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, okay, I'll find that in a minute so we can look at it. But as we're talking about the technical aspects, I just um, wanted to go back really quickly to show people images of um, those early moments that you shared with me. Yes. Sorry. Share screen. So this is a picture of um, Ibrahim's father in an article about him in his studio. Um, and so just images of the, the area, yeah. Fustat, um, and- I mean, you know. that's, that's I, I want to say that I don't have a lot of images from the Kern. That's Kern in Fustat, what, what, what Kern. And uh, that's from area called, uh, Ashm not Ashmun, sorry, called Ushim in Fayum, but these have the same, kind of kernis so i show it as as reference to what first thought was was it used to look like, like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah that's exactly for start now yeah how they make the clay they make this canal and and i think that's for me that's the best way to make clay really <laughs> because it takes the time to dry so they make it outside you know egypt is sunny you know, like <laughs> Not like here. Right. Yeah, I mean, mostly all the year. So they make this uh, this canal or this holes in the ground, and they 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 make the clay like slip, and they just put it to dry from the from the sun, you know. And yeah, and it takes like that. And that's uh, one of my. Isn't that like an installation piece? <laughs> Yeah, but to them, it's just, this is how they make the production to make, you know, their, their work. It's not in, in the, in the mind of these artists, they're just make, they're just figuring out a good way to stack it. Yeah, yeah, and see the letter, I mean, like, they climb up. This kiln was one of the biggest kiln in full start, and I am so mad of our government to Destroy those. Destroy these kernels, really. That's, I mean, like, they make new village and they destroy all these. So kernels. this is inside the kiln? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the one, the photo in the right, that's inside the kiln, yeah. So how, they fire this kiln every six months. They make work for six months and they put it inside this kiln, stuck in like that. That's a jug for water. Exactly, you know, yeah. and how they stack the pieces together, it's very crazy, <laughs> Jennifer. So the bottom in the top and the top in the bottom, like from the bottom to the ceiling. Yeah. So jug filters? Oh, pieces. I mean, no. it's, 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 it's a jug like what they made the jug filter before, but, but, but it doesn't have jug filter inside, it's just holes. For the water, you know. Got it. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to show that really quickly. And, and then here, and the, the photo in the left, mm -hmm. it's it's like that's that's one day work, you know, like they, one day. Oh my yeah, God. they throw on the wheel, 
and the Elisa work to dry and since they, they will bring it back to trim them. But to be fair, in every studio in Fustat, it could be five uh, artisans throwing it on the wheel, you know, five people. It's like production, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah. I have a question about that. Um, often in production studios, just the things that I've researched in the U.S., like in the 1930s in the glass factories in the U.S., they would do a lot of this production. And then in the off hours, some of the artisans would make what they called a whimsy. So they would just make something from their own mind and during their time off. Did that, did that happen very much? Like they're doing this, they're making the same jug all day long yeah I in mean, an hour when it was time to go home did they ever make something else or was it just like no i want to go have dinner i think they they no i don't think it was like that so i think they only make the production they can sell and you can make money from you know so, so there was no tradition of making some other thing no no it's interesting um Okay, so we're just going to talk for a few more minutes and I want everyone to know that we will then be taking questions. So if you have um, a question, please do put it in the chat. Um, and then we will um, come and look for that later. Oops, I lost my thing to share. Okay, um, so it's, I thought we would um, talk a little bit also about the fact that um, Ibrahim is in an exhibition right now, which um, of course is closed, but hopefully, you know, maybe it's on hold and it'll open back up again in New York City. It's the American Academy of Arts and Letters. Um, last year, Ibrahim was, um, well, in 2018, he was a finalist for the Burke Prize at the Museum of Art and Design, which is, um, quite an honor. And then he just recently had a piece accepted into the Philadelphia Museum of Art collection. And I know he's, his work is also at the Victoria and Albert Museum and other really um, important collections around the world. Um, so I think I'm going to read a, a little quote from this essay that um, Ibrahim shared with me. I wondered how I could combine this traditional artifact with ideas of contemporary art and yet still make something that smelled of Egypt. I want to reclaim quintessentially Egyptian motifs and forms that have been either trivialized or overlooked and come up with something new that does them justice. To see artwork rooted in Egypt's own cultural heritage with its own complex and diverse aesthetic histories is rare. I want to connect the present with the past bypassing Western art. Clearly Egypt is an amalgam of its influences, but there is so much in our long history to mine. I feel it is practically untapped and an endless well of influences. Do you wanna um, talk a little bit about whatever is your most recent project that you, um, you know, how do you feel about the fact that you're in the US now making work that is responding to your life in Egypt and the history of Egypt? I mean, I think I, I, I since I'm in the U.S. now, I like here, anyway, the mixed culture, you know? So I can see a lot of art from all the world because the mixed culture in the U.S. And also that's pushed me like so much to think about Western art, Asian art, uh, all other arts, but I miss Egypt so much. And that's the only way I can live with my country. I love my country so much. And that's what pushed me really much harder to, to make work has, like what you said, it's made in Egyptian of it. So, I mean, yeah, so. Do you want to tell them about the phrase that in Arabic, the smell smells of Egypt? Where does that come from? Uh, like the melody. Yeah. What's, what's the when the, 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 when you said smells of Egypt in Arabic, uh -huh. 
that that's a phrase that's tied to like Baladi culture. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like Mariam saying your to tell you about that. It's like, it's like, uh, Baladi culture is like traditional Egyptian, and like, oh. like, like folk, what, what you want. So, yeah, it's more, I mean, like, like, So it's a way to stay connected. Yeah. 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 And so that I'm must- thinking, I'm really thinking about everything I have learned in my life, even if not, if, if it's not about ceramic, like how the people think, how the people think, the people word this, and what the meaning of it, and how that's tied with uh, old Egyptian and even with Islamic art and when they create, and you know that's like Islamic art is creating about religion, thinking and religion, idea, like. So that's what really I'm thinking about, like, like some, so, sometimes some word is just, I don't know how to say that, like masal or amsal or uh, like, yeah, example of life, uh, uh, in words, you know. So people always saying that over and over and over in Egypt. And how that's tied with this idea of Islamic art and with Egyptian culture and with uh, old Egyptian art. And I, I'm always thinking this way, you know, like. Like we're thinking about it. This is the, the most simple thing: hidden beauty or gamal al khafi. What's it mean hidden beauty? What does that mean? Like, like is that mean is that tied with religion? Is that tied with culture? Is that tied with you know? And what the people uh, say uh, talking up uh, or saying about this idea? You can see that's everywhere in Egypt. Like, is that means like? Mm, like we have something to say it Allah or God doesn't look how you look God look at your heart you know it doesn't matter if I look very pretty from outside what's inside me you know all this idea uh, creates the work I mean and I'm really like I didn't I didn't work to be uh famous i just go and go with what i love what i i find in myself you know i feel like my work is my community that's what i want to see that's what i want to hear that's what i want to do you know so that's 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 what art means for me personally so yeah so um and i love that you just said art is my community i i'm writing that down um (laughs) I, I imagine, you know, having traveled a bit, I know that when you leave your own home country, especially if you're living somewhere else, you really have a new appreciation for, and you can see the culture in a way that you really can't when you're there. Like when you were there, it sounds like you, you saw the flaws of the system. You saw the problems with the way the pottery was in the art world. And then does that sound right to you that like now that you're here in the U.S., can you see things about the culture and the value of what was there that maybe you didn't see when you still lived there? For sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do. I do see good stuff. I do see bad stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. Is, is there like one thing that maybe you realize now that you don't think you would have noticed if you still lived there or thought about in the same way so many things like no, no twice. everything Sorry. everything i know it's a hard question that's sorry. i mean it's not hard i mean like like i don't know with which side you're talking about with the side of politics with the side of people thinking with the side of right. of art with the side of you know, so if we're talking about politics, I see so many big problems in my country with politics. 
since I'm in Europe. It's so funny because you come here to the United States, you hear Muslim is terrorism, like all these idea in the, in the social media or in even TV, every time you see the word Muslim, someone kills someone and he's traumatized. And you don't see really the beauty. You don't look inside. You don't look inside. If I don't know Jennifer personally, I don't know if she's a good person or bad person, <laughs> you know? And you go to Egypt, you find American try to kill us. You know, it's like, yeah, you hear all these words and the, and you are like, okay. <laughs> What's true, yeah. It's like, it's like I, I don't know. I mean, like, like it's politic way. People, I mean, like, like, like I, for me, politicians thinking about the benefit, whatever, what it is, they will go with it. Even if they hurt another people, they don't care. Even in Egypt or in in United States, you know. But but for me, it's not like that. For me, like we are citizens, we are people love each other, we live together, whatever. Even here or in Egypt, we have so many Americans in Egypt. It's like our brothers and sisters, and we have good relationship with everybody. Like in the streets, it's different, you know. And yeah, I mean, like. But from you listening, listening of all these ideas, someone doesn't you know could it change his mind totally. Like, like yeah. Yeah. Like that. So. Thanks for sharing that. It's I think it's so important to think about that. Just being in a different culture, you know, living living in a new place and just seeing being having that different perspective really allows you to see everything um, more clearly, maybe. Um, so I think I'm going to switch over to some questions that people have, if that's okay. I have, um, I'm looking at the last one, which was Jen Scanlon um, said that she's been looking around at the internet to see and was noticing um, some installations like uh, Nile Brides and other ones. Do you want to, I'm going to put that one in the screen right now. Interview group. Um, do you want to, and you had, it's really appropriate because you were just talking about the um, folk art or folk culture of Egypt. And I think that this piece um, yeah. has some resonance with that idea. <laughs> yeah, this, this has like a story behind it. So, <laughs> yeah, Nile Bright is, um, we heard that story. I don't know if it's real or not, or some people saying it's real, some people it's saying- folklore. It's folklore. Yeah, it's folklore story. So they, uh, the flooding of the Nile every year would happen in Egypt, and they will pick the most beautiful woman, and they give it as a gift to the Nile for the flooding. It doesn't happen. So. Like they would sacrifice, sacrifice yeah. you know, beautiful virgins. I mean, it's part of a folklore of like fertility for the country, you know? Yeah, and I was, I, I mean, in my business, usually I, I look at my ships or my fossils as a sculpture, like men and, and this idea. But anyway, so I was thinking like, how, how the most beautiful woman know she will die and how she feel inside, you know? Like, like, yeah, because you are the most beautiful girl in the country who will take you and kill you. Like, how, how, how this will happen, you know? So it's like very, very, <laughs> very crazy how people thinking. Anyway, I don't know if it's true or not, but I made these pieces as a woman and, I, I pick the black color as also two idea, traditional uh, old Egyptian bitfire technique and, and black, like it's very beautiful line outside, but what you feel inside. So I thought black will be like everyone in the dates in, um, in my culture, even after the people that people will wear black for like a long time as their uh, dress yeah the mor from morning and yeah. then aren't the did you say that the circles are about the earrings that the women yeah yeah like like this second piece like like the second piece is it's reflecting woman from nova with this very beautiful uh, earrings. earring 
circle yeah. earring on the which they still wear today. This is a tradition that's still. Yeah, yeah, it's a very traditional in South of Egypt. So within this piece, you have something that looks like, I mean, it, it is, it doesn't look like, it is contemporary art. And then you have the layer of Egyptian mythology and folk tales. And then you have the layer of just like eternal concept of mourning and that it's black. And then you have this concept of as well, the folk art and the cultural tradition of these specific women in the specific area and, and what they're wearing. I mean, it just, I think it's thrilling that there are so many different layers of what's happening. Plus each one of the objects is just so beautiful. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a all different shape, all different idea of, uh, of even hands and, and bodies. So yeah, you can see the, the fat and the skin. <laughs> <laughs> like um, yeah. yeah, they're all different shapes too, which is good. Yeah. Um, so maybe just talk about this one for one moment and then I'll go to a different question that we have. Since okay. It's a similar time period, I think, to the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dream is, is a, after the Egyptian revolution um, with everyone fighting to be the president of the country, like every group they will like. The people doesn't agree together and they just thinking about themselves, they doesn't think about the country. And this piece I made like, like let's say 600 pieces or, or more, all different shape. It reflect Egyptian people. And I was really thinking like, if we love our country, we will build the new pyramids. And who, whatever who's coming the top doesn't matter. We want to build our country and to make it better. And that's the way I was thinking since I was listening in the news every time. Like who's like people fighting on TV. It's exactly like like sometime here with republic and democratic, you know. So yeah. Yeah. So the, and that the fact that these are so this installation is so big and has so many pieces and then your more recent pieces which are so large and we have another question just asking and obviously it's different for each one but you know how long did it take you to make the um maybe the um i'm sorry i don't remember the title of the one you were telling us about that had the two parts with the um cylinder connecting them uh, magnolia, magnolia. Oh, Magnolia. Uh, and can I, you say about how long it took to make that one? I, I think it takes like a month working on it, just with clay, you know? I mean, I really don't, don't even realize how long I work, I work in the piece, you know? Like, I just work. Just, the time I, just goes. By. Yeah, I even sometimes I was, I, 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 I even doesn't take to some time to, to, to my pieces because I get so excited. And, and with carving, with making the holes, sometime you have to really spend every minute to finish your piece before it gets dry because I will lose it if it gets dry, you know? That's also one of the things. I just enjoy my time. I don't think really about how long but it's, it's about a month for this piece yeah a month for this piece with the carving with the hand building with every, with with throwing with everything yeah yeah um and i think that that ties into this slide about the um you know people are looking at your exquisite carving and wondering how that happens and so do you spend a lot of time here it looks like you're using a compass do you spend yeah, a lot of time I, with I it use a compass. I use a canvas even to draw on the piece sometimes, you know? So, because, yeah, I, the idea of, of geometry in Islamic uh, art, and I, I was so lucky in, 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 in my life because I, I have to take this class with uh, uh, Prince Charles from London. They would come to Egypt. They have like protocol with the Egyptian, uh, culture of uh, minister of culture, minister of culture. Oh. Uh, and i was in this time working in 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 areas called fustat art center which uh, part of of 
uh, Minister of Culture, and they have this protocol to come teach us uh, three years of geometric on paper, just on paper. <laughs> and that's really helping me a lot with my work now, because I, I think even about my shape with the same way of geometric too. So yeah, I would experience like making some making some drawing with with geometry as circular or whatever and try to use my idea that is a piece i made this piece which is called water lally uh, if you go down two slides yeah that was the drawing for and it, not always my drawing so when i was when i was uh, when i study in the egyptian museum i would make a lot of drawing and and even both sizes to the shape what i want to make to make it exactly the same when i said i was copying not really but now usually i just make i i didn't make i have an image in my mind and i i work but sometimes i make this uh, geometric because uh, drawing for installation or for whatever what i'm thinking about from my pieces yeah that's one was one and even the drawing if you look at the drawing and you look at them you, you will not find them the same but it's from the same idea and sometimes i make drawing and when i work it doesn't become like a change on it or, yeah yeah you have to see how it works on the clay yeah um thank you okay so we have an art a question from magdalene dykstra she says, when did you leave Egypt and why? <laughs> it was <Mariam>. a... <laughs> I know, that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> no, love, I'm... he left for well, love. I, I left Egypt 2012 and yeah, so my wife, my wife is American. Well, that's what's happening. So, <laughs> and we was planning to leave in Cairo already when we get married. But having the revelation in Egypt, I was outside of the country for a show, and she was in Egypt in this time. And uh, I can't even, uh, in this time, with no phone, with no internet, with no anything, and I can't talk with her. And it's the first time after the three days, no, 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 any connection with her. I called her, and I found her crying and saying, I'm stuck to here. I didn't have food. <laughs> <laughs> and I told her, call your MBC and try to get out. So in this time, it was even no flight for me to come back, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so she come back to the United States. I stay in Egypt and then she would come visit every six months. But the, the Egyptian uh, in this time was in the Egypt in this Egypt in this time wasn't doing well and we, everyone was worried and we don't know what we will go to so we decided it's so much for here to come every six months or so yeah. I decided to come with here to the United States and I'm very glad I'm very I'm I mean I'm very lucky from I was a child <laughs> because to 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 have father like my father, that was a gift for me. And when I come to to Nora's Corona, I realized that I am in one of the uh, states that has very big ceramic community, and there is village. It's called Zegrov. Zegrov, all of you maybe know about it. Like forty minutes away from me, so. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty lucky. Yeah, and the rich historical too. So it's it's I, I feel like I am lucky. I, I have find so many good people in my life. And yeah, I mean like and that uh, that question also was have you been back to Egypt? And I think <coughs> you've done some um projects with friends there. You brought people you brought some friends over here to the US for some projects, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I go back once or twice a year. Yeah, first when I came here to United States 2012, I would like every six months I go back to Egypt like twice a year. So 
I have a big family there. My mom was still alive, and I would go every six months to Egypt. So I bring some of my uh, of my line of the best artists really to to uh, America to have workshop in in in. Uh, the University of North Carolina in Sibiru, which was very good to have them here and very good for the students to see them working in the studio, in the ceramic studio, and to know about Egyptian artists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because most, I mean, what you get here is mostly ancient. Yeah, Egyptian. and I people it, don't it, think about it, contemporary. I appreciate really uh, what uh, Lawrence Jenkins. He's the head. He was the head of the art department, and he's the one makes that happen. Really, you know, so that's always very good. That's great. Yeah. Well, we're we're just coming up to about an hour, and I just want to say, um, I don't think there are any other questions at the moment. I mean, people have questions about glaze and other things, but I think right. um, we could we can maybe send you some questions offline if people are interested in continuing that. Um, I just want to say the idea that um, your, your statement that art is my community and your really continual um, acknowledgement of being lucky and grateful and uh, these are all things that in in addition to your incredible skill and creativity make you i think a really important member of our ceramic community and the clay studio community so i want to say thank you for that and oh thank you so much I, it's my pleasure to be in your community <laughs> you, know, so you know that i love you guys and i love the clay studio and you know when i was in tunis i was telling all the people i'm going to my favorite place for workshop Nick is too equal. Okay. I mean, anyway, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's always talking about the clay studio abroad, so. Well, that's very nice, thank you. We talk about you a lot, too. And we'll, we're really looking forward to our project, Making Place Matter project, and to um, oh, yeah, really dig into that. You want to see the early idea? Oh, yeah, sure, oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I showed them the little house, but you need to talk about it, okay? Here, I'll, I don't know if you want to lift it. But, oops, do you want to put it back on, um, or, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. I don't so, know. Yeah, everybody ask, you can change your view to speaker view so you can see um, Ibrahim's piece figure if you haven't already done that. I don't know. Yeah, that's, 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 that's. Are you one. still on share screen? That's, oh, am I? Oh, sorry. Here, let me stop that. Okay. Okay. There we go. Thank you. That's, that's one of my, I mean, that's the first piece I made for the idea. And it will be one of multiple pieces. Mm. And I'm thinking really about the art texture in, in, in Islamic art and... Architecture, art. Islamic architecture. Like exactly what we were saying. Like if I don't know uh, Jennifer personally, I don't know if she's a good person or... Or, or bad person, I'm sorry. I that. could be a bad person. Yeah. It could be. <laughs> yeah, so when you go through charge or through mosque or through even synagogue, you see it from outside. It's just you don't know what's inside of it. So this piece is just will be in the wall. You can see. And it. when you go in. All the four insides are carved. Oh, wow. Can you guys? See yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I don't know if you can see or not. You can but see, yeah, anyway. that's great. That's so nice. That's beautiful. Yeah, and, and that's really what I'm talking about. But I'm so it's like it gets here. I'll show you the back so you can see it gets hung on the wall with those um you oh. see these yep. mm -hmm. so that when you come at it, you just you see, see the, the white. You don't see the inside. The, the shape, whatever the color would think about you know, it. and see the silhouette. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so that's the first piece. Yeah, that's exciting. That's so exciting. It's begun. <laughs> yeah. I that's I still that. I I still don't know what I mean. It's just the idea, and I just want to make this piece. But I I still don't know how it will go. You know. So yeah. Well, I mean, it's exciting to have a whole year to think about it and to have this time to to have um, conversations. So I'll just introduce. 
Elizabeth Essner, who's on the call, she's the consulting curator for the exhibition, and Ana Jimenez is also um, on the call here, and she is our um, project coordinator. And of course, Josie Buckelman is also my partner in, in this um, project. So we're just, we're really excited to start working on that and have all the people who are on the call listening, kind of keep your eyes open for information about the show, Making Place Matter. We'll be um, talking more throughout this year about uh, the plans as they move forward. And you'll get to see Ibrahim in person next year when we open the, the exhibition and he'll be an artist in residence again for a few weeks. So yeah. thanks again so much Thank for you. spending your morning with us. We. Could, can't thank you enough. No, we're so thank, excited. No, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Okay. Thanks to you both, and thank you to your camera woman. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.